This is a review of Naruto, The Search for Tsunade Arc, episodes 92 through 100. This will spoil through episode 100 of this show, so if you haven't seen up until then, do not watch any further in this video or you will be spoiled. The summary of this group of episodes can really be described as two major things happening. One, a fight among three legendary ninjas, and two, returning to Konoha to adjust. I have mixed feelings about the big epic fight because I feel like given the circumstances it should have been a little bit more epic, but I guess it wasn't really about the actual fight itself. It was more about what the fight symbolized, which was that Orochimaru is officially cut off because now we don't even want to hang out with him anymore. Also, a lot of hurdles were jumped over for a lot of characters, changing them into what they needed to be in order to go forward from here. So for these episodes, I'm going to look at the characters rather than events, because otherwise it would just get a little repetitive. Let's start with Tsunade, because she's definitely had the most development from the start of these episodes to the end. And I'm not going to fault her on her weaknesses or her fear of blood, because there really is a very big difference between a fear and a phobia. As someone who lives alone, I have a fear that I will choke on something and die and no one will find my body for several days. But I have a phobia of Jupiter. Just looking at a picture of Jupiter stresses me out and gives me anxiety. Even now just kind of talking about it makes me all nervous. And I know it's irrational, but you can't control that stuff. Luckily, all of her trauma was kind of intertwined. So her fear of blood was connected to her fear of abandonment and a fear of losing the people she loved most. So when she saw the opportunity to break the cycle, when she saved Naruto, she jumped on it and was willing to lay down her life for it. And her decision to fully do that meant that she was kind of officially accepting the position as the fifth Hokage because she was fighting Orochimaru to protect the village. It's still going to be there, that trauma, she's still going to carry it, but it won't interfere with her living her life normally anymore. And when she gets back to Konoha, the first thing she does is fix Sasuke and Kakashi, and then stomp all over Lee's dreams. I think the initial Tsunade we were introduced to would not have worked so tirelessly in order to improve Lee's chances in the operation, even if it was by such a small margin of 8%. Why are they putting us through this emotional roller coaster with Lee and spending three episodes on whether or not he's going to get this operation when we know he's going to get the operation and that it's going to work out? Tsunade's definitely been properly endeared to us after her rather alienating first impression of her. And I think that she's also fully dedicated to this new job. Fixing Lee is just going to be icing on the cake to just round out her as a lovable character. And then there's Naruto, whose growth can really be summed up in just that moment when Sasuke was revived and Naruto was all ready to start blabbing and make the situation about himself, but then he actively and consciously stopped. He actually managed to read the atmosphere of the room for basically the first time ever and reflect on how his attention-seeking behavior was not right for right now. And that's always something that's really bothered me about Naruto as a character, where regardless of what was going on or who was experiencing the drama or what characters were involved, he always had to stick his nose in and make the situation about himself. It was always very annoying when we would be trying to work through a problem and Naruto just stumbles in and starts waving his arms around and screaming and how everyone should do it his way. So that moment when Sasuke woke up and Naruto stopped himself from being a dick was really exactly what the character needed to do in order to show us how much he's grown. Yes, he came up with this rad idea to use and master the Rasengan, and yes, he was able to win Tsunade over by how determined he was. But this one little moment of personal growth is much more important as far as I'm concerned. And now that it's happened, I hope it continues to happen and he won't just go back to his old ways after a couple of episodes. Sometimes growth and um, moral evolution is very selective in this show, and a character will make a grand stand about something only to completely contradict it a couple of episodes later. It's very frustrating for me, so I hope that Naruto will use his new skills that he's acquired in the personality department in order to be a team player and stop being such a brat. Now, as far as the three-way battle among the three legendary ninjas is concerned, it was really more of just a two-way battle between Tsunade, 
and Orochimaru, with Jiraiya standing idly by and watching. And that's fine with me, because I think that Tsunade really needed to show off how great she was, because so far in this show, the female of the group has always been kind of bullshit. And they all summoned a giant animal, Orochimaru's snake, Jiraiya's frog, and Tsunade's slug. At first I thought these choices were so random, but it all, I guess, goes back to this Japanese game where the three choices are a snake, a frog, and a slug. I'm curious about these animals' existence when they're not summoned. Do they live somewhere on a different planet in a different dimension? They're conscious of the time passing, and they're also conscious of the fact that they haven't seen each other in a while. I mean, so obviously they're separated from one another wherever they hang out when they're not being summoned, but Kakashi's dog summon guy, he uh, is in an environment where he's able to purchase the same shampoo that Sakura uses. What? No one cares? Oh, okay, moving on. I like to imagine the conversation between these three characters when they're trying to figure out who should get which summon. Well, clearly the snake has to go to Orochimaru because he kind of looks like a snake and all of his other attacks are snake-based. And the slug's a girl, so I mean, Tsunade, obviously. So I guess that leaves Jiraiya with the frog. I like to think that the personalities of the animals reflect those of the people who summon them, because the snake is a huge asshole, and the frog is kind of disinterested, and then the slug is super agreeable. It was interesting to see them all interact with their giant creature, but then that battle ended so quickly. Now that I understand that we're going to have giant animals fighting each other in this universe, it does feel much less silly. So although I wanted to see more, I did know that it was more important to see Tsunade's skills as a ninja as she fought against Orochimaru in order to make her a credible character. But also I wanted a more grand Power Rangers-like battle. Then there's a lot of housekeeping junk going on back at the village. We got to see basically everyone. No Ino or Choji, but basically everyone else. Starting with Team Kurei and I, who are just going out of their way to be wacky. I've developed this new technique where my dog pees everywhere. I'm trying to collect bugs, but it's difficult with your dog peeing everywhere. You guys are the best. So yeah, I guess you guys can just like do that. <laughs> Neji and Tenton were training in the forest. Or at least Neji was, and Ten Ten was doing her usual thing where she spouts off random information when she's in the general vicinity of Neji. And of course Shikamaru showed up because um, he, I guess, has business at the building, which I, seems like an equivalent to City Hall, and he got a chance to interact with Naruto. We lingered on him and his dad for a while after all the important characters left so that they could have a conversation about whether or not girls have cooties. And Tsunade mentioned something about that family taking care of deer, and I have to ask if that was serious or if it was meant as a joke. Do they really have a deer ranch in addition to being ninjas? Also, if they do, that's stupid, because Shika means deer. And Nara is a city in Japan which is really famous for how many deer it has. I mean, why? It's just a really stupid addition to that family's mythos. And of course, finally we have Lee. I touched on this briefly, that um, they were spending too much time on something which was obviously going to happen, so it just felt very overblown. Kind of like when Sasuke died in the Land of Waves arc, and they spent all that time on those flashbacks. If they dedicated one episode to the decision-making process, then it would be okay, but three? Eh. Of course, it was charming to have all those guy flashbacks and see how Lee adapted to his philosophies. And obviously, choosing between giving up your dream and pursuing a very dangerous road, which leads you to a life-threatening operation, is a intense decision that should be toiled over. But it was just too much. I love Lee, but these episodes could not hold my attention. Maybe I'm just ready to finish this arc and move on to the next one. I couldn't even pretend to care at all about that horrendous filler episode that um, put about zero effort into making it entertaining. And we all know how I feel about Konohamaru, whose conflict I feel should have been taken much more seriously. His grandpa was killed, and he doesn't seem to have parents, so his support system is his two stupid friends and Naruto. They should have 
explored Konohamaru's conflict and treated it with more respect instead of going down the comic relief route. You know, and then having the token, like, serious talk at the end in an attempt to make it mean something. I have very little patience for when this show tries too hard to be silly, and I wish it would just stop bothering. But don't forget, I'm also a huge stick in the mud, so you shouldn't take anything I say on this matter with uh, too much thought. For now, let's work through what's coming next for this show and what we can expect from the final arc, because after this next arc, it essentially ends, the series ends. It moves on to become something entirely different in Shippuden, but we're not talking about that, that's the forbidden word. There's also roughly 1,000 filler episodes before we do get to that end point, but before all that we have the Sasuke recovery arc. I've received some excellent advice on what the watching schedule ought to be for this arc, and uh, if you haven't already seen it, it's in the description, assuming I remember to put it there. Working off the title of the arc alone, there are two potential ways this arc could work out. One, Sasuke is injured and for some reason we spend an entire arc focusing on his recovery. Or two, Sasuke runs away or disappears or is abducted and we must recover him. The second one does seem more plausible considering recent events. Orochimaru alluded to the idea that he could fix his arms if he just switched his body up again, and maybe he's gonna pass on the idea of letting Sasuke grow up a little bit and just make the change now. I can't really say for sure, but before we dive into that arc, we're going to watch a filler episode, which apparently is uproariously hilarious. It's gonna be nice to have a break in between this review and the next review, so that's really what it's there for. But it better be good. I'll see y'all next time for episode 101. Bye! This is a review of Naruto, The Search for Tsunade Arc, episodes 93... <laughs> I got so excited about the 100 that I can't even speak.